Hey, Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today. And if you're drafting this weekend, don't forget to pick up the UDK or the UDK Plus. It's the ultimate draft kit, the number one tool to help you win at your draft, set the foundation for your team. We're talking sleepers, breakouts, busts. We're talking cheat sheet. You can print it out. We've marked up all of our my guys, all of those special position upgrades for your team. Check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. We're back. Tuesday, August 29th, the Fantasy Footballers, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. Back in the building. I've just barely seen each of you this morning. Back from our trip to Los Angeles, and it seems that you've recovered your voices. Uh, Mm. Mostly. Yeah, we'll find out. TBD. How's it feel? It still hurts a little bit. Yeah? Yeah. Everything in me feels... (laughs) Like a little, it hurts a little bit. I'm, pre- little I'm bit? pretty tired. I'm we, gonna be honest with you. We had a we had a trip. Being old is it's overrated, but I still recommend it. <laughs> Being still, old, oh, I highly recommend getting there. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess uh, it's better than the alternative. Yeah. Uh, we are back in business here in the studios. The Deucers are here. Judge Giamatti, Al Borland, the Ramp Scallion, hanging out in Deucers Alley today. Um, I believe Brooks told me that he got back from the trip and slept <laughs> uh, from 5.30 p.m. till 4.30 in the morning, so a solid 11-hour run. Yes, sir. Last night. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely done. There wasn't as much sleep on the tr- the journey, so we, we uh, drove into L.A., spent uh, a whole day at the NFL, which was a cool experience. Hadn't done that before. Mm-hmm. Um, checked out, uh, got to see SoFi, and then – filmed a dynasty episode of the podcast at the NFL and some other um, hits around the NFL. Yeah, did a Rich Eisen spot. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the NFL has a new headquarters uh, <laughs> at, at SoFi. And, and let me just tell you, the Foot Clan, in case there's any concerns, the NFL's doing very well. <laughs> there's, there's just so everybody is aware. Yeah. Uh, I think they're here to stay, man, because when we took that tour – they are doing real, real good. Didn't hit you like a uh, a fledgling startup. No, <laughs> no, no. They got some cool stuff over there. <laughs> so we did that, and then obviously on Saturday we had the Megala show in Los Angeles. Thank you to everybody that came out. Yeah, it was that awesome. was uh, that was really cool. An amazing time. Um, we're hoping Al Borland gets to uh, to rest up a bit. I mean, he did a few things for the show. Oh man, he was the general. Everything. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and the rap scallion shared on our social. There's like a one and a half minute, really well done uh, edit of kind of the highlights of that trip, and it involved my favorite moment of it was this very brief second that Al Borland was shown on camera. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. and he just kind of looked. He had his hands, I think, crossed, and he just smiled. But and were, it was like it had been done. Well, no, it was, that was the. Are you actually recording me right now? <laughs> I, know, I know that's what it was, but I want to believe it was it was peace with the fact that the show went off very well. Oh no! My favorite no. part was seeing the the camera angles from behind us mid show and realizing, wait, when the heck was he walking behind us during the show? I had no idea. Good you were, job. You were locked in. I was man. locked in. And Jason did. Uh, he he broke out the t shirt cannon. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, which, t- for the record. <laughs> sometimes with t shirts. Sometimes. With, Jason <laughs> fired off a, uh, if you haven't seen the video, middle of the show. He's like, I'm going to be real cool here. I'm going to fire off a t shirt in the middle of the show with my cannon. At least he didn't spend several moments setting up. <laughs> yes. Letting everyone know this was going to happen. And then fired absolutely nothing into the air. Yeah. And That's, realized he was sitting on the T-shirt. That was pretty funny. Uh, but welcome, and today we've got good vibes, bad vibes. We'll be reflecting on what's taken place over the preseason, maybe some fantasy uh, insights from what has taken place. We've got NFL news to cover today. We've got a new waiver wire segment today, and um, 
yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a good show. There's a lot going on. We're not that far away from kickoff. No, I I'm realizing it more and more how close we are. Uh, I think the the thing that really helped me realize, like, oh man, it is upon us, is the fact that right now I'm in three different main league drafts. Like, right, uh, it's uh, yeah. I, as I, we speak, a couple of slow drafts that we're in the middle of. Yeah, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is this is not a mock draft anymore. It's it's here. It's real. Uh, Jason, I'm going to warn you ahead of time. Be careful with the voice here. But the Megalobol, <laughs> the Megalobol is open right now. If you go to megalobol.com, that is our uh, the largest long or sorry, largest in season tournament. So season long, and um, we are up around thirteen thousand entries so far. We're very competitive. We want to break the record from last year, which was about twenty two thousand. So head over there, megalobowl.com. You'll learn all the details on how to enter. And uh, the winner, not only do you go down in the annals of history, but you receive a spot in the 2024 Listener League with us. So megalobowl.com to check that out. Here's today's quick question. Good vibrations. All right, we're looking at good vibes or bad vibes from the preseason and how that might change the way things shake out for fantasy players because we spend a whole off season with kind of narratives, storylines, assumptions about teams. Some of these transactions that took place, they changed them. So I, I will start simply because... Yours, yours was going to be mine. Was it? Yes. I'm... Look, it's been fun in a way, in the kind of way where you, you know, self-deprecating way, where to make fun of the Cardinals this offseason. That was their theme music from the offseason. And it continues. Uh, they cut Colt McCoy, who was the pre presumed starter of the, of the Cardinals, uh, at the quarterback position with Kyler being on the PUP and not being available. So they just cut him, which... Makes more sense now in the fact that they traded for Joshua Dobbs. Which at the time made no sense. Yeah, and then Clayton Toon, their other rookie option at quarterback, and Dobbs are now in contention to start the season as the Cardinals quarterback. And I don't know. Did you And hear? David Blau is still there, no, right? No, no, no. No, the oh, clip. Yes, where so Jonathan Gannon has come out and said he will not be revealing his starter. Due to competitive advantage. Fired. Immediately. You're not a fan of that line. It's the stupidest crap in the NFL. You're, if There's the old adage, if you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. And you're right now trying to say, we have two potential options. You have no options. If I am a general manager and my coach ever does that, immediately fired. Immediately. I think that's a bit much. No. No, it's not enough. Like I wish there was more I could do as an employer. You're you're in prison. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I, I am firing you That's, and I'm putting you in jail. Yeah, I will put you in front of a jury, and we're talking probably seven to ten years. Fired. Okay, so here's the deal: if it's Dobbs, who we watched play briefly last year with Tannehill out and the Malik Willis looking awful, and then Dobbs pretty much just trying to survive in Tennessee, or it's a rookie in Clayton Tune, I think fantasy players have a legitimate concern at this point James Conner is going to get all the work in that backfield Hollywood Brown should get all of the targets in the wide receiver room because across from him is going to be a rookie in Michael Wilson um, and yet we are now at a level of quarterback play at least at the a level no man there's two potential starters we're at a place where this could be potentially good. real bad mm -hmm. um, I'm talking Kellen Mond against the Packers. I'm talking Ian Book for the uh, New Orleans Saints. Like, you're not going to get a ceiling with either of these players. Cole McCoy had some games in Arizona, and I think he was pretty much toast. I, It's fine. They moved on. He couldn't get the ball down the field. So at least in that regard, maybe Clayton Toon throws some of them up for Hollywood. But like Hollywood and James Conner, 
no longer have a floor that I thought they have. At mm-hmm. least that's my take. I think lava. I think the floor is lava. <laughs> yes, for for Hollywood and James Conner and late round uh last round pick Michael Wilson sometimes for Zach Gertz for Trey McBride. Um it's bad. And the Cardinals I I don't know if they are like in the building tanking. But they I think they might be. I think it might be like very, I mean, they gave away Isaiah Simmons for a seventh round draft pick. Yes, that part is is actually a big deal to me, and because why would you possibly do that? It maybe yes, he's not the player that you thought you were drafting. He was a top ten pick linebacker. He, he can still make plays for your defense. Like if he's on your roster, he's still going to play. To me, that was a full on salary dump. Like they're Th- like we, was, we don't want to deal with which this. is what Colt McCoy's was too. I mean, it, you you are. You we're, are settling up for next year. We're going to be bad, so let's start saving some cash. And 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 I heard, you know, Mike Jarecki out here in Arizona, he's talking about Kyler will definitely play this year. I don't know if that's true. I, it seems like he probably will in the back half of the year, but um, is that to put him on display for, for a trade in the offseason if they have the number one pick? I don't know. The vibes are as bad as bad can be in Arizona. They are seven-point underdogs to start uh, the really? year. Really? Seven point dogs. Seven point dogs to start. To Sam think, Howell. To Sam Howell and the commander. <laughs> I forgot who it was. And so. Uh, yeah, this, this isn't, you know, going and playing against <laughs> Herbert. Yeah, they. I mean, if, and, and Buda Baker on the defense is the last man standing. And um, I don't think it's going to be very fun. So ba- very, very bad vibes in Arizona. And enough to where I took Hollywood Brown pretty late in a draft. It, it should have been fine. It should have made me feel good. And it made me feel like Ugh, what I, he has felt I'm, like a, a good pick all off season based off his ADP being the number one guy, hoping that Kyler will be back sooner than later, and you have an adequate quarterback to to support you in the meantime. And now it's maybe maybe Dobbs or Tune actually comes through. I think Clayton Tune, if I'm remembering correctly, was like PFF's highest graded passer last year in college, so maybe but i'm with you that the vibes are just whew. now jason you once owned a max hall jersey i sure did this seems like I still do this seems like your moment yeah. like a clayton toon jersey well the problem is max hall dominated preseason clayton toon hasn't even been that good no no one for the cardinals has been great in the preseason certainly not as good as some of the other later uh drafted quarterbacks can't remember the uh, the Raiders. Who's the Raiders pick that they got? That quarterback has been tearing it up. Um, I, don't, I can't remember his name, but he's been great in the preseason. Okay, I want to switch gears here and talk. Raiders quarterback uh, Aiden yeah. O'Connell. Thank uh, you. Yeah, thank Aiden, you. Uh, Aiden O'Connell. Aiden yeah. O'Connell. Um, I want to switch gears and talk about a positive Please. good vibrations. Right, that was the seg- the the segment came in with a good vibrations drop. Right, and then we hit him with the Cardinals. Sorry about that. Yeah, um, I should have let you go first. To me, I think the winners of the preseason uh, is are, are the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Their their preseason has looked as good as it gets. And I know, like this last game, they were playing starters against backups. You better look good, but they still did, right? So you can't bl- you you can only play who's ever across the field. And there was the world where they come out and they look mediocre or average against second stringers and instead they just flat dominated them it was like you bl- blinked your eyes and it was 17 to nothing and specifically Kenny Pickett to me it, he is the the question and the answer of how the Pittsburgh Steelers offense will perform uh, I, I like Najee Harris I love Jalen Warren for where he's going in drafts I think Deontay Johnson is going to be a huge value this year Pat Fryermuth Great late round tight end. Uh, there, there's there's a lot of weapons here. Even um, guys like Calvin Austin late in best ball drafts. I love. Uh, of course, you've got everyone's favorite uh, sensation in George Pickens, the highlight reel. But it doesn't matter if Kenny Pickett's not good if he doesn't take a step forward. And everything that I have seen in preseason looks good from him. The way he's reading, the way he's throwing the ball into tight windows, uh, trusting receivers, leading receivers, running an offense, seeming like he's in full command of the leadership, like he's not a rookie anymore. And it 
and he doesn't look like a rookie anymore. His preseason has been great. I think he's got two incompletions through all of preseason, uh, a couple of touchdowns, no interceptions. So the vibes for me have just been really, really positive, and I think this is going to not be a top 10 offense, but I, I think it's, you know, it's between 10 and 16. It's a top half offense, and when you go from the putrid horse crap we saw last year <laughs> to a top half offense, that is a huge fantasy value uh, sauce. <laughs> All right. All right. I mean, I look. I, I had you till sauce. Yeah, I mean that was a bad finish. <laughs> yeah. What well, what is it? It's a, it's a huge fan, that that gap in value from when they suck last year to being positive this year. I don't know if it's sauce, but it could be. It's like a you know it's, it's a secret sauce. Uh, opportunity. Yeah, it, right. it is. There we go. It is an opportunity, <laughs> and I watched every play from Kenny Pickett this preseason, um, a couple of times. You know, you go to last year, and he, he, he did complete 63% of his passes. He had the occasional kind of play where he put, you know, he was able to move in the pocket or escape the pocket and find a guy downfield. It just wasn't – he wasn't able to sustain drives the way he was in the preseason, complete them, right? He was the field goal king over that back half of the run, mm -hmm. the run where they actually had won some games. Uh, but this preseason, that's been the impressive thing is the drives are being finished. They're actually getting into the end zone, and – um you know, it's made me look specifically Deontay Johnson and mm -hmm. Pat Fryermuth way more in drafts. Yeah, and, and Deontay Johnson, if you haven't been paying attention, has been used a little bit, a little bit deeper, a little bit further downfield this preseason, which is um, nice to see. You don't want a guy finishing the season out here with like nine, ten yards reception. Right. Um, yeah, and like Jason said, it, it, there's a lot of sauce there. Yeah, secret sauce <laughs> for fantasy goodness. Mike. Oh, yeah, I will jump in here, and it's the Denver Broncos, and I have them down from weirdish yeah. to bad. Mm. Uh, I agree. It all – I mean, it, it started off – the offseason started off hot for the Denver Broncos. It was – they made, they ripped the Band-Aid off. Nathaniel Hackett's out. They trade the draft capital. They give the cash to Sean Payton, who was, you know, having a, having a good life on television – he comes in. He's going to save everything. And then we get right into a really strange uh, media fight where there is definitely an unspoken rule among the NFL of coaches just don't trash other coaches. You don't do it. Sean Payton said, I don't care about that rule. And then he just he went after Nathaniel Hackett, which was like, what is – why? Why are we doing this? And then if you start thinking about the human nature, you go, are you hedging, Sean Payton? Are you saying that this year is – He did so much damage that it's going to take me multiple right. years to climb out of. Yeah, are you saying that this team is going to be bad? Uh, don't blame me. I'm still cleaning up the mess from the other guy. That's kind of a strange way to start off the uh, the offseason. Then you the injuries, that's no one's fault, but it's just – They're piling they're, up. They are piling up. Tim Patrick, a.k.a. Fireball Jones – uh, I mean, he's out for the year. Who knows if his career is ever going to get back on track. This Jerry Judy hamstring situation, those are like, awful. That's an awful way to start the year because the, your chance of re-aggravating is always so high. The Greg Dulcich was a very uh, sought after, a favorite late-round sleeper at the tight end position. And now with the starters... Adam Troutman has played 24 of 28 snaps with Russ Wilson. Dulcich down at 16. So it's not that it's gone for, for Dulcich. It's just – Yeah, the, you have more question marks of like, exactly. are you going to get enough? Like, the upside of really being someone who breaks out, he can, be, he can be useful here and there, but him turning into that week-in, week-out starter where you, you stole him at the end of the draft, that feels like that upside is gone as well. I, I, I still believe it is there. Personally, I, I think that the way that they're using Dulcich in preseason is more hiding him, but TBD. I, I will say that the bad vibes with the injuries, they're good news for Marvin Mims. I've been really rising on Marvin Mims, realizing that his opportunity at the beginning of the season is basically the wide receiver, too. Like yeah. He's, he's going to be out on the field a the, lot. The biggest, the biggest problem is that a bet on him is a bet on this putrid offense it's a bet on Russ. Yeah. It's a bet on Russ. It, it is uh, – I still don't know. Like, my confidence that Sean Payton can fix Russell Wilson is is not that high. 
I don't know if they, that he can do that. I mean, I think Russ last year, he had a handful of games where he had decent fantasy outputs. It was a complete lack of consistency from throw to throw, play to play. Um, you know, the running game, how much Javante do you get? How much Samaje? Like Javante in drafts right now is an he's a scary pick cuz mm-hmm. you 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 may have some upside there. You probably do, but yeah, if the offense is bad, then you don't. So yeah, it's, the, the, it's been murky, and then you're competing with the Chiefs and the Chargers. And I, you know, I'm sorry. This has been a it's been a rough road for Bronco fans since the Russ trade. Yeah. So here's a good if you want like how we deal with Russell Wilson. Let's talk through something here. Okay. <clears throat> I am in a draft right now. It is Unlimited. a limited. Su- yeah. uh, it's a super flex draft. Uh, with a lot of great people from the industry, a lot of sharp minds in there. I'm at the and you. turn, and me somehow. <laughs> I snuck in, um, and I'm at the turn. The 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 uh, I'm drafting at the 12th spot. We're going into the fourth round. I'm almost on the clock, and I'm riding dirty in a super flex. I've got no quarterback. Sixteen quarterbacks already off the board, and I'm sitting here, couple. I'm two picks away, and Russell Wilson is still there and I'm like I don't think I want him I don't I don't think I'm trying to decide between Russell Wilson and Matthew Stafford and I've got Cooper Cup and I think if both are available when I'm on the clock I think I'm going Stafford and that just seems that seems crazy but I mean do you think I should take the value of a dropping Russ and hope that no Peyton fixes it no probably not Mike, yes? No, I take my stack. All right. uh, Quick break. Back with the news. All right. We're going to dig into quite a bit of news. All of the cut downs are happening uh, for these rosters as long as... Which they are wild now because it's, it's not like the... It's not the stair step down. It's... You have all these players. And like, okay, this day. What do they have to go from 93 to 53? And yeah, like, I believe that is correct. Like that. Yeah. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. All right. Uh, I mentioned it earlier. Kyler onto the reserve PUP to start the season, missing at least four games. They released Colt McCoy. We talked about the quarterback situation. It's gross. All right. The Seahawks. Rookie wide receiver Jackson Smith and Jigba, who just underwent underwent surgery to repair a small broken bone in his wrist, expected to begin the season on the active roster, so okay. not on the PUP. That does okay. not mean he's playing in week one. That is great news. What it does mean is that they expect him to be back before week four, and that is very important because, as Mike pointed out, Seattle has a week five bye week. So there was always the fear. Yes. It was like, will he be back for week one? I'm not sure. He might not be ready to start the season. Timeline seemed like he wouldn't be. But we were afraid that if it got too close to their bye week, then it would be like, well, now they're just going to hold him, rest him, make sure he heals up, and we won't see him till week six. That's too far to make him a, still a valuable draft pick for where he's going in drafts. But this news says he will probably be back week two or three. Today is the deadline for the Colts to keep Jonathan on the PUP. Jonathan Taylor. No, just Jonathan. Just Jonathan. <laughs> uh, or trade a trade could happen sure because they? they're either going to put him on the pup to start the season or they won't and so there is a chance the trade goes down today we're recording this very early on tuesday so um that's the latest on jonathan taylor i don't know what in the world you do with him in drafts right now yeah i mean hopefully you can just wait a few more hours and figure this out because this is a pretty big deal if he goes on the pup that means that we have a clear and definitive answer to whether or not the ankle issue is still an issue. And if the ankle issue that should not have been an issue come training camp is still an issue to where you can't play games, I move him significantly down. And then, um, you know, if you get a trade, Eagles, Dolphins, any of those rumored rosters, I mean, that changes everything for those uh, for those teams. And people are drafting, and then all of a sudden – I don't know. You know, different different players are going to be uh, different. Fantasy players are going to be disappointed. Uh, Traylon Burks back to practice. Okay, That's great. Okay, Dalvin Cook practicing. He's that, been a very interesting potential selection in drafts. Like you, you see him there, 
and I haven't pulled the trigger yet, but I've just I, there's definitely a spot where I will. Yes. Even if oh, I certainly. even if I get a strong three or four weeks, five weeks to start the year, where that's massive. Um, that's super valuable. And if you and if you ended up like, I don't know, with Jonathan Taylor, and you could get a few good weeks while you wait on Jonathan Taylor's situation to to pan out, I don't know. It, no, it, it could be worth it. One of uh, one of my favorite tips that we've ever done and when we do our top 10 shows is making sure you don't just look at the season as in totality break it down look at the these little chunks of the season like the first four to five weeks then the middle and then and and getting ready for the closeout which all of these sections of the fantasy season they all have a very different uh, uh a different preparation that you take for them and and so I love taking Dalvin Cook, or uh, that's a little too hyperbolic. I think that Dalvin Cook is a is a solid pick where he is going usually in drafts. I'm not reaching, but I'm letting him fall to me, and, and I think he's a good value right now. Uh, Jason, I don't know if you've been sweating a little bit, but Mark Andrews hasn't practiced in three straight days. Yeah. But John Harbaugh says he expects him to practice this week and play in the opener. Well, that's good. Um, yeah, no, I, I've been Bateman really Bateman not upset. practicing either. Yeah. I've been very, very uh, – sad at this news obviously I have so much exposure uh to Mark Andrews and I have encouraged everyone to draft him in the third round and the the only issue that I see with Mark Andrews truly is just making sure he's on the field so I hate that he's not on the practice field right now um CJ Stroud officially named starter this is so dumb they're I mean, it's 10 <laughs> point underdogs against Baltimore in week one. You named CJ Stroud the starter when you drafted him with the number two pick in the draft. Yes. Everyone knew it. Sure, glad he didn't get all the reps, you know, of first team yeah, practice. It's he, not hard he being looked, a quarterback. He didn't look good this preseason relative yeah. to, to some of the other opportunities. Oh, but he had to earn it. How did he earn it by not looking good? He did not have to earn it. Just because you say someone has to earn yes, a job. Yes, Jason. It, it's, you're, you, if you're going to say yes. Fired. 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 In prison. <laughs> Fired and in jail. Immediately. Right to jail. That's another one. That, I think this one upsets me so much more. I, I hate it, the, dude. This one it. is. The, the other one, look. Competitive there, advantage. There is actually potentially a competitive advantage. No, there, no. Yes, there no, is. Listen, yes, if, there if is. you're trying to prepare yeah. for a mobile quarterback or I a pocket passing quarterback, or a pocket there passing is. quarterback, there is an advantage of saying, I don't know who we're playing. Yes. Absolutely. Maybe it's not a significant one. Maybe it doesn't move them needle, whatever. But there is an actual negative and only a negative thing. Yeah, competitive to, disadvantage. A competitive disadvantage for your team to say, yeah, I'm not going to let you practice with the starters because of some old curmudgeon thought process of like you oh, you got to earn it and if you're going to take that curmudgeonly approach then make them earn it Don't, you just gave it to them yeah you tell the truth yeah tell the truth yeah um well stroud's going to start and if i had an opportunity to draft the baltimore defense uh for week one i would jump yes. all over that it's i like stroud i like him being able to emerge as a quarterback but it's going to be a rough start Wandale Robinson activated off the PUP. Jameson Crowder released by the Giants. I mean, that, that That's at least some good. We've heard nothing about yeah. Wandale this entire offseason, and he was he was like a a waiver wire uh, darling basically last year of when is it going to happen? When's Wandale going to be in here and be the guy? Second-round pick by the Giants. His tape is – he's so shifty. Has his breakout game and then tears his ACL, I believe. Yeah, ACL, yes. So, it's – I'm not – I haven't turned the page on Wandale, but it's just been an entire offseason not hearing a single thing about him. Yeah, I mean, I have more confidence in Slayton, Hodgins. Oh, yeah, those are the – and Paris Campbell. Paris Campbell. Those are the starters. Uh, Miles Gaskin, goodbye. Oh, the gas man. He has been – He ran out. Released along with Albert Aguebanom. Offseason darling for a minute last offseason. Tight end for the Broncos. Will Lutz has been traded to those Broncos. There you go. The the kicker drama has been it's been pretty wild. Yeah, I mean the uh, Chargers just named Cameron Dicker, Dicker yeah. the starter and let go of Dustin Hopkins. Yeah, right. I mean, with a name like Dicker, you knew he was going to win yeah. the job. You just you just 
Just make why, him why a starter. That? Rhymes with kicker, okay. obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and Hopkins was traded to the Browns, which the Browns drafted a kicker. They drafted a kicker. Wait, and, well, like with their and, seventh round pick? And dunked no. on people with it. Wait, what, 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 sixth round pick? I <laughs> I honestly don't remember. In my head, it's a fourth. It is a fourth. It was a fourth. It's a fourth. They drafted a kicker in the fourth, and the guy didn't make the team. Like, what? What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Even the NFL doesn't draft kickers. Okay. Okay. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/insurance. Welcome to the Waiver Wire, presented by NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube. All right, uh, this year, the waiver wire segment, one of the most important mm-hmm. each and every week. We're kicking it off early because we want to talk about some trends and some kind of some strategy. Yeah, some philosophical ways to approach it, including an article by uh, our very esteemed writer, Matt DeSorbo, who went and, and looked statistically at un- rostered players so players going 13th round or later is what we're calling an unrostered player and those players breaking out early in the season and how you should approach those pickups because i think a lot of times and maybe for good you know responsibility reasons people don't jump on their fab budget early uh maybe they want to save it for the rest of the year but you should read this article and some of the highlights here. Unrostered players that break out in week one historically have a higher points per game total the rest of the season. You define breakout real quick. A breakout, we're just saying scored 15-plus points okay. in a half-point league. So if you get that out of week one and then they become the go-to waiver wire pickup, historically speaking, those players that have a week one breakout, they are better than players that break out later. So players that pop here and there throughout the year which those players pop into the waiver wire as well it's more of a trend indication in week one when when that happens and um that doesn't mean that every week one player that scores a bunch of points is not going to regress horribly that happens all the time we make fun of the ogletree situation Mm -hmm. from years gone by but they still on average score more than uh, players that break out later in the year. So just what I what I do with that information personally is I take that information and say if I have a if I have a conviction about a player's performance in week one, which is generally not just looking at the box score and saying it's 15 fantasy points because they caught two touchdowns. Normally it's looking at the box score and saying, wow, this player played 80 percent of snaps, or this player lined up mm-hmm. in this position that I didn't expect. Or this quarterback was going to this guy. Or this guy was getting separation that I didn't see coming. He's taking a step forward. Like you or have he was the goal line back. All, all, of, all of those type of All of those type of things. That's what you're looking for in week one. And, you know, we're watching every single game, every single week. So you can come to the waiver wire segment and we can tell you which ones we believe just lucked into touchdowns or whatever and which ones should be good. But the, the, the research shows that when they break out in week one, they are better than when they break out in week yep. two, three, four. That's not to say that the best breakout will always come from week one. This is just averages over a long period of time. Uh, we've seen it. And so week one is really, really important. That's why a lot of times in the drafting season, we talk about grabbing a player at the end of your draft that you're totally fine cutting. You're just grabbing someone to say, I want to see if he is in this new projected role or not. And then if not, you cut him because you're going to want to pick up people week one. Yeah, and a good example of that kind of player, you know, this year might be the Paris Campbell. It, you know, just not knowing what the offensive involvement is, take him with your last pick, cut him if it's not what you think it is. Last year we had a handful of these where week one you kind of learned something new. Geno Smith was out there on waiver wires, ended up with a solid year. Uh, Jamal Williams, like, yeah. uh, you mm-hmm. know, 17 touchdowns. He was 46% rostered heading into the year last year and ended up being one of those players that, if you had believed early, it paid off in a big way. Uh, Garrett Wilson was 60% rostered after week one uh, last year, so that that was one that flipped the other direction. Evan Ingram, not rostered heavily in week one. So you want to pay attention to more than just the box score, but know that historically taking a shot on some of these players early, it pays off. And uh, my you know my example from the past was in 2018. And if you've been listening to this show long enough, you know 
A kittle. You know what a kittle means. <laughs> and I dropped a kittle on George Kittle. That was equal to 44 fab dollars. That is aggressive. Very aggressive. And this was after um, he had nine targets in week one. He flopped in week two and was not good. Two catches, 22 yards. And people dropped him and victory lapped the fact that he was terrible. And then he finishes the tight end three on 136 targets with over 1,377 yards. Um, and I spent heavy because my mindset in that moment was, yes, there is a chance this doesn't work out. But the value to my roster after seeing George Kittle's involvement on the team in a couple weeks was that the value is so immense. Like I could not acquire this any other way. And so it was worth the 44, and it, thankfully that one worked out. Yeah, for me, the the example that came to mind from kind of a week one, you looked, you saw how a player was being used, was Naeem Hines in 2020. Sure. He came out week one and was the running back five, scored 23 fantasy points, and that was kind of out of nowhere. No one was, like, drafting Naeem Hines, expecting him to be great. I believe he was on my roster, Jason. So. Well, I, I mean, experts, sure. <laughs> uh, but he was he was available, and – he finished the season as the running back 20. It was a bumpy ride. <laughs> it, it, it wasn't super consistent, but what you saw in week one, eight targets. That was He was yes. super involved in the passing game. He played the majority of snaps, and you go, okay, this, this is going to be someone who's relevant for fantasy this season. He might not be a superstar, but he will absolutely be relevant and, and again, finish the season as the running back 20. you got to go after those guys when the, the utilization is right. And the player I wanted to bring up, is this is he's a combo platter for us because it is Alfred Morris of, oh, of the Washington Manders. Yes, be, because he was both the the number one pickup after week one because I think he was like the running back five. But if you were locked in, like you didn't just do your draft, look at your team, smile at what you have accomplished, log out and say, "Well, I'm ready for week one." If you kept l locked in. All of a sudden, the news right before the season went, oh, it, Alfred Morris is going to be the starting running back for Washington. You didn't know if he was going to be good, but it was the fact that it was such a late uh, a late piece of information of, this is a starting running back who was on your waiver wire. No one knew who he was yeah. until that week or so before, uh, before the season started. So some people did pick him up right before, right before week one even started. It paid off. Uh, it paid off huge. And I mean, sixteen hundred yards, thirteen touchdowns later, I mean, he was like he was the steal of that season. Yeah, and if you pick up somebody early that you do believe in, you do add a trade chip to your team, and or you have the ability to trade other players on your team because you've added depth. So there is a flexibility, right? You get you get the maximum amount of possible output for your team because you didn't wait. Uh, if you hit early. Because you've got mm -hmm. all of your maximum amount of weeks that you could play that player, um, you've got a trade chip immediately. And this is not saying go all in. I mean, it goes it, p players overreact as well. But if you have the conviction about the opportunity combined with the performance, just know that historically those players that do break out early have the longest sustained opportunity. Um, and every week we do we cover the waiver wire uh, gyms. Uh, each and every week, players that we're picking up, we have waiver wire rankings on the website now, mm -hmm. where we put them in order every week so that you get a guide, a guide to what to do. And next week, we're going to talk about some undrafted gems. Those are kind of like what Mike is describing yep. in Alfred Morris, where it's like you might be done with your draft, and there's someone better than who you picked at the end. We'll bring up some names next week so that you can uh, pick them up before week one. Yeah, stay locked in. And I, that just reminded me because he wasn't a week one pickup, but it was I looked at the end of my, my bench a just a handful of years ago. It's like, you know what? I think all this buzz on Darren Waller, it seems like it's mm -hmm. turning into something. So I dropped my last pick. Or it, if you're in a league, this, I don't think that we've even talked about this strategy piece. If your league doesn't force you to draft a kicker or a defense, I usually don't. Like, yeah. I it's it's not as helpful now that we don't have all four weeks of the preseason. But having a having two late round guys just stashed, just waiting these last couple weeks of news, uh, see if someone gets an upgrade. Like things do happen. 
So it, it's nice to have an extra couple chances. But yeah, Darren yeah. Waller, right before week one, picked him up. You're like, wow, this is like this is a league changing pickup, and the and the year hasn't even started. Yeah. So for to give an example of what Mike's talking about, if you don't have to draft a defense or a kicker, instead of grabbing your kicker in the last round that you don't really care about, you could pick up like a Kareem Hunt. And just wait yeah, and see if sure, he ends sure. up getting a job. And obviously, if he doesn't or get Leonard a job, Fournette. yeah, or Fournette, uh, you know, just someone that their tides could change really quickly overnight. Um, and then, obviously, if they don't get a job when it's coming close to week one, then just cut them and pick up a kicker. Yeah, or Dion Jackson, yeah, who sure. might be the starting running back for the Colts, and <laughs> no right. one talks about it. But right, um, and this is not to say you don't play a kicker in defense. You're just holding these players and then making decisions on your roster and signing a kicker in defense right before week one. Exactly. All right, thanks again to our sponsor, NFL Sunday Ticket on YouTube and YouTube TV with NFL Sunday Ticket. It's never been easier to keep up with all of your fantasy players. For $50 off your subscription, sign up at youtube.com slash fantasy footballers, which I am proud to say we have nine televisions set up. Yep. For week one, and I cannot wait. We're ready. We're ready. Let's get into a couple mailbag questions. Mailbag. mailbag. Ooh. <laughs> Voice still isn't there. Yeah, well. I did my best. You did okay. Uh, if you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button. You can dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. You can also join our free Discord channel, which uh, will give you the ability to chat with thousands of like-minded fantasy football players listening to the show and get advice that way as well. Our first question comes from Dylan in San Francisco. What are some lighthearted punishments for last place that can also be done in a league with members in different states hmm so the first thing that came to mind you would you would need someone else to go with because you need someone to document it and of course it's way more fun if everyone can be in person but you can still document it seen a, a good bit of it this year is forcing someone to go to like a fancy restaurant with a big stuffy as their date and <laughs> they just have to endure that whole dinner with a giant teddy bear or whatever I did, I did see across that. from them. I thought that that sounds like a delightful, lighthearted punishment. I just shared with Jason there was a punishment where a gentleman had to go to a kind of like a public area and earn $20 in tips. Oh, oh, yeah, uh, playing the, like the recorder $20 or $20 in tips to be released, <laughs> uh, playing the recorder uh, as a fantasy football punishment as well. We do the in-person draft so we force the last place player uh they end up uh spinning the wheel of water and get 12 cups of water poured on them in embarrassing ways and then they draft soaking wet in a yeah. sweater in a turtleneck sweater in a turtleneck sweater <laughs> um which uh from what i've observed is an unpleasant experience mike you've had to do that i have had and to how do was it. it it was in fact unpleasant <laughs> okay Will in Syracuse, which running back would you prefer to draft in the second round? Derrick Henry or Josh Jacobs? Ooh, full PPR. It's a 12-team full PPR, and that does change the pick for me. It does. It does for me as well. So that means we're all Josh Jacobs. But let's talk half PPR. That's the format we usually play in. That's much closer. Who would you take, Josh Jacobs or Derrick Henry, in a half PPR? In that event, it's not a wide margin, but I would go Derrick Henry. I have Derrick Henry in a half PPR one spot higher right now. And um, it might come down to how the wind is blowing that, <laughs> yeah, say, that what are your, day. What I are mean, your vibes that day? Honestly, that that's going to end up a, a second-round pick, right? Uh, but probably. Yeah. Or yeah. late first, a second-round pick. So I am probably one of those players on the back half of the first round, and I might pick based on my first pick. I mean, if I'm being completely honest – that may def change it a little bit. So, what would change? Obviously, if you if you drafted Devonte Adams, then you would so, want to go Henry. Sure. Yeah. So I think I I feel like Henry is slightly more risky this year. 
Yeah. With the age. And so if I felt really stable in the first round with my selection, maybe that changes the equation a little bit. I've got Josh Jacobs one spot ahead. So either half PPR or full PPR, I'm going to take Josh Jacobs over Derrick Henry. I don't blame anyone for going the opposite. And obviously in a full standard league where pass catching isn't involved, I think we all swing to the Derrick Henry side. I, I like this question from Colby here because um, this happens in leagues all the time. Colby in Vancouver says, hey, guys, simply put, is Jameer Gibbs too expensive for the first round? I know my league, and that's my only chance. Ooh. And and the the thing I like about this question is the fact that you like Jameer Gibbs and you want him, but you know he's going to be overpaid for. So this is an emotional decision for you because you want you wanted the chance to draft him, mm -hmm. but your league is overvaluing him relative to the other players. And so in a league like that, you legitimately cannot draft them at an appropriate value. And what what the right thing to do is, what the unemotional thing to do is, is is wave bon voyage to yes, Jameer Gibbs correct. and say, you're not an option for me this year because what you represent instead of a player for my team is a player that will be drafted to push other players down the draft to me. Yeah, yep. I, I mean, there is a, a limit. I mean, Jameer Gibbs is very good uh, he's one of Andy's my guys we like him a lot mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that we're going to take him over Nick Chubb or uh, s someone like that that just we have so much more data he's going to get so much more work yeah more opportunity history yeah. and, and you know it's like there is a place where you just go and you get your guy but it's all about the opportunity cost of what you're giving up and if you're talking about first round options first round running backs there there's just better players than Gibbs and so you know you can grab them you can have fun but I think you're gonna have the most fun when you get a W and then another W and another W that's that's my recommendation all right last one here Mitch in New Jersey yo 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 ballers yo yo yo, yo, yo. yo. is there any concern that Isaiah likely with the second year leap projected expected uh, is there any chance that he reduces Mark Andrews expected production I think it's a good question to ask I mean anytime you have talent uh, on the roster, there's really only one area that I would have slight concern about Isaiah Likely on, and that would be the fact that he is a capable, large pass catcher near the goal line because he is a good player. I think he is going to take a step forward, and I love it if my pass catching tight end is all alone. I mean, if, if you have more options around the goal line, maybe – it represents, I don't know, two touchdowns Mark Andrews doesn't end up with over the year. I don't really personally view it as more than that. Yeah, I don't I don't either. And then it's, yes, likely is a, an emerging player, but how much will he actually be on the field if they are actually running 11 personnel, which 11, the, the, the one and the one means there's going to be one tight end out there. Uh, and that one tight end is going to be Mark Andrews. Uh, for the foreseeable future. So I like Isaiah Likely. I, I think he's a very interesting player, but I don't think it's his time yet. If, I will say this. If Mark Andrews does miss time, if he doesn't get back with whatever's going on, sure. Uh, if I've got him, if that's the draft I've done, I'll I'll cut whoever my last pick is and pick up Likely, and I'll start him week one because he is a talented I think that's player a good if you're play. not familiar with plan. him. Yeah, you were saying kind of where I was headed, which is that if Andrews ever went down during the year, likely would be highly competed for on the waiver wire mm -hmm. because he is a capable pass catcher. And uh, we saw that. He had some good games last year when Mark Andrews missed time. So, all right, that is going to do it for today's episode. We have a fantasy time machine and a fantasy MVP episode coming this week. Please check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. Get ready for your drafts. This is another big draft weekend coming up, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Labor Day. That's when our League of Record draft is. Going to be a very, very fun week, and uh, maybe we'll get some resolution to the Jonathan Taylor situation. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll know a resolution by the time you're listening to this. And we'll, maybe. We'll comment on it tomorrow. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening and supporting the show. We'll be back with you tomorrow. We will. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.